Hello everyone, welcome back to PTAC Chemistry channel. So in this last subsection of this topic on chemical um, analysis as well as experimental techniques, we'll focus on the identification of ions and gases and this include flame tests. Flame tests is a new bit in the syllabus for the 2023 all-level chemistry. 5070 all level chemistry but it has always been around for the IGCSE uh, extended chemistry which is also equivalent for any 14 to 16 years old chemistry students all around the world so these are the the learning outcomes so basically straight from the syllabus candidates should be able to describe tests to identify so not only you should be able to know what test it is you should also be able to identify meaning you give a positive result so based on questions, they can give you positive result or negative result. So based on positive result, you'll be saying that these particular ions are present. All the carbonates will react with acid. And of course, this will give carbon dioxide. So that's why they focus on and then and then because you get bubbles, you get effervescence, you must test for gas and you must test for carbon dioxide gas using lime water which will turn milky or chalky as a result of calcium carbonate being insoluble in water form. So all these are chloride, bromide and iodide. So I think in the older syllabus for the all level 5070, if you look at recent past papers, be careful that syllabus has changed. Syllabus will change over time. So for the 2023 syllabus, these are the learning outcome. So it's specifically stated you must not test for chloride, bromide and iodide. Just because you don't see a lot of previous past paper question asking you iod um, bromide, uh, it doesn't mean that they are not in the syllabus they are in your 2023 all-level syllabus okay so we have to acidify with dilute nitric acid and the very reason for this is to ensure no carbonate is present to ensure it's not carbonate because um, silver carbonate so this is a uh, test with silver nitrate silver carbonate is also insoluble so that's why we don't want it to uh, to you know to give us a false positive because these are all precipitate uh, precipitation reactions with the silver one so silver aqueous silver one nitrate ag plus aqueous plus the halide the chloride bromide or iodide soluble plus soluble and then you get this solid this is called precipitation reaction very very common ionic equation which must include the stat symbol as for the carbonate plus acid you should really know about the co32 minus so sometimes it could be aqueous sometimes it could be solid if you have group 2 carbonate then it will be solid if you have sodium carbonate or ammonium carbonate or potassium carbonate so all sodium potassium ammonium salts are soluble in water so you gotta be careful about what you have so what we're going to get is we're going to get the salt, which of course will be soluble. And therefore, you know, we don't show them in the ionic equation. Ionic equation is just showing the important ions that are involved in the reaction. So that's what I have done here. Ionic equation for carbonate plus acid, giving you the gas and the water, which don't dissociate into the ions easily, unlike the salt that you are forming. Nitrate. Nitrate, there's this word called reduction. So don't worry about this word yet. This will come in the next topic. So uh, don't worry too much about it yet for now. It will make more sense uh, later on after we cover the redox topic. But essentially, you have to add in aluminum foil. So aluminum foil is just like a piece of aluminum. So it's aluminum solid. And then you heat it up. You heat it up with aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then you have to test for ammonia gas because you get ammonia gas. What is very important, the difference between NO3- minus and the test for NH4+, plus is that you must have the aluminium foil. Without the aluminium foil, you do not get the ammonia gas in order for nitrate to be present. Sulfate is a very common uh, reagent to be tested. Again, you acidify with dilute nitric acid in order to ensure it's not carbonate. To ensure it is not co 32 minus because guess what barium carbonate ba2 plus co 32 minus is a group 2 carbonate group 2 carbonate is insoluble in water 
All right, so that was part of solubility rules. So after testing with dilinitric acid and it still remained colorless solution, that means it's not barium carbonate to begin with. And uh, what do we have? We add in some barium nitrate. You could also be barium chloride, all of which are soluble. So barium chloride or barium nitrate are soluble. They are aqueous solution. What you're gonna get will be Ba2 plus aqueous plus the sulfate aqueous and then you get BASO4 which is a white solid so you get a white solid which is insoluble so this is a classic precipitation reaction last but not least you have sulfite versus the sulfate both of these come from the formula topic that you must be very careful about the naming so all of these are technical details and they are listed as the test for n ions which means you must know the difference in spelling the difference in formula the difference in test and the difference in result what we are using here is this thing called acidified aqueous potassium manganese 7 so we have acidified H plus every single acid has H plus and then we have KMNO4 what this does is this will get decolorized as a result of a redox reaction as I mentioned with this term called reduction redox basically is a reaction involving reduction and oxidation it will make more sense after we cover the next topic in the meantime you really need just need to know the the, the test and the positive result these are the list of cations that you're supposed to master. I think out of all of these lists, lead 2 plus is not in the list. I think I have mistakenly provided it in the PDF notes uh, that you're supposed to fill in. So, you know, uh, do cross it out because this is not in your syllabus anymore. Lead 2 plus. Okay, but so just so you know, the lead 2 plus behave just like silver 1. So, so silver chloride is white in color, white precipitate, cream precipitate for silver bromide, yellow precipitate for silver iodide, the lead to halite, lead to halite meaning the lead to combine with this chloride, lead to chloride, PBCl2 is white, PBBr2 is cream precipitate, so sort of like between yellow and white, and then PBI2 lead to iodide is also yellow, just like silver iodide. This is aluminium cation, ammonium cation, calcium cation, chromium 3, so the valency is 3 plus there, 2 plus for copper 2 plus, iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus, very commonly asked, zinc 2 plus, even though it belongs in the, in the first uh, row of that transition metals, but zinc 2 plus solid are white in color, it's not colored at all, whereas the zinc 2 plus solution, so when you dissolve them in water, they are colorless, okay? So that is one thing which, you know, differentiate or distinguishes the zinc 2 plus from these three, D, E, F, and G, sorry, these four, they form colored compounds, colored solution, colored solution, and they also have colored solid compound which you know you can start with before you get the solution okay so on to the next one which is the test for gases so identify the gases obviously we none of these is based on smell so none of it is based on smell so you do not you do not ever test for gas based on smell although that is what you did in the lab I told you, when you smell something, you should get used to the smell, but that is not the actual positive identification of the gas. It just simply gives you the hint of what gas is produced, and therefore you have to actually go on and do the actual test as instructed, as you would know from a real practical paper. NH3, you test with your red lemon's paper, it will turn blue because NH3 is alkaline, alkaline or basic. Okay, so that means it has hydroxide ions. The pH is greater than 7. Carbon dioxide, we use lime water. As you know, we did lime water previously. Lime water is saturated. Saturated meaning the maximum amount of these that dissolve in the specific amount of solvent, which is just water. So you have a saturated solution. So it is not very soluble, but you can get a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide when they react with carbon dioxide you're gonna get calcium carbonate a group 2 carbonate is insoluble 
and you're also going to get H2O. Uh, what happened there is this is a base or an alkali, and this is an acidic oxide. You'll learn more about this eventually. And this is like the salt that you're forming and water. So this is essentially a neutralization reaction. Okay, a chlorine, you use a damn litmus paper. Actually, you use a damn blue litmus paper, and the blue litmus paper will turn red because it's acidic. But what is very important is that the blue goes to red and then it goes to bleach. We use chlorine to purify paper. That's why your blank paper, you know, like photocopying paper or your printing paper are white in color because the last step after they process the wood, the wood pulp from the tree, they bleach it using chlorine because it will make everything into white, okay? Remove all the color. Hydrogen, we use a lighted splint. Lighted is the one that still has got the fire uh, going and then it will pop, it will extinguish with a pop sound. Glowing splint is the one that has got a bit of flicker, so no more fire, little bit of flicker, oxygen support combustion, so it relights or it rekindles the glowing splint. Sulfur dioxide, so we use this thing again, acidified aqueous potassium manganate 7. As you could see, that's the same thing we use to test for sulfite. Here we are testing for SO2. Uh, what happened there is we use H plus and KMNO4. So all of these are just description of the test. You must know the result as well. I'll show you the table a little bit. Yeah? This is a new addition to the 2000 and 2013, well, not 2013, 2023 all level syllabus. However, so similar kind of questions have come out in IGCSE extended chemistry for a number of years. So we use a flam test to further identify the cations. As you will notice, some of these cations are not identified, cannot be identified by using this test because all lithium, sodium, potassium salts are soluble in water. So all of these salts, all salts of lithium, sodium, and potassium are soluble in water. And when they are soluble in water, when you add sodium hydroxide to them, they are still going to be soluble. Okay. Unlike most of these that actually form precipitate with aqueous sodium hydroxide. Therefore, we can use flame colors, all of which are given in paper three practical, but will never ever be given in a theory paper such as multiple choice, your structure component, your alternative to practical, they will not be given, okay? So jumping straight onto these notes, so I leave you to actually fill these results in. Uh, already done the thing here. This equation is not balanced, by the way. You have to balance this with H2O in order to, you know, have somewhere for the hydrogen to go to, the results of which are actually available in this table. This is the kind of table you have in paper three. It's called qualitative analysis. We're not dealing with numbers. We're dealing with observations. So qualitative means we don't care about numbers. We care about observations. When we see bubbles, we test for gas. When we, uh, when we see a white precipitate, and then we add in excess, that kind of stuff. All right, so these are the tests for anions. Not only the test, you must know the result as well. So you see these words called PPT. PPT refer to precipitate. Unfortunately, you have to write in full. You have to write in full, except in paper three. It's only in practical paper that you are allowed to use PPT as a short form whenever you're doing theory paper whether you're in structured paper or uh, alternative to practical you have to use the term precipitate instead of that ppt okay this is a test result your conclusion of course is agcl agbr and agi so these are the colors of this particular precipitate this is nitrate that you need the aluminium foil together with the sodium hydroxide, as I mentioned. No aluminium foil, no ammonia produced if you want to test for nitrate. Sulfate versus sulfide, different test. Here is white precipitate because you are precipitating out the barium sulfate. Remember the white precipitate is barium sulfate. So think about the barium nitrate. Sometimes they use barium chloride as well. So not just barium nitrate, it could also be barium chloride, Ba2 plus Cl minus. Purple to colorless, that is basically your MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus, as you have seen in the previous alternative to practical under the titrations from the previous topic. So that is your purple, 
and that is your colorless and we'll talk more about these particular reactions in the next topic you have the test of cations these are probably one of the most important table of all you have the test with sodium hydroxide which is NaOH and then you have the test with aqueous ammonia which is NH3 dissolved in water oops sorry not NH3 gas but NH3 aqueous meaning dissolved in water it's a mixture okay when you add ammonia to something obviously you will smell a bit of ammonia because you just added ammonia to it all right so you do not get ammonia when you add ammonia to something all right i mean you don't say it's present because it comes from the aqueous ammonia the only time when you get any ammonia with NaOH is when you have ammonium so something to keep an eye out of ammonium is spelled like this it's an ion okay it's a very special one so i'm going to draw ammonia Ammonia is NH3, just like that. So it's got three normal covalent bonds. Ammonia is a molecule. Ammonium is an ion. So ammonium ion is like that. And it uses both the, both the electrons in order to attract a H+. Plus. So you get a plus overall, which is actually on the nitrogen, because what happened is it accepts H+. Plus. It accept H plus because it's acting as a base, it's acting as an alkali, it will accept H plus. This is an ion, this is a molecule. Okay, so you get ammonia produced on warming with NaOH without aluminium foil. So there's no aluminium foil here, there is aluminium foil there. And then all this, the rest of the result, as you could see. Uh, chromium 3, copper 2, iron 2, and iron 3. These are colored precipitate. In fact, they come from colored solution. Okay. And uh, there's a result of transition metal, characteristic of transition metal compounds. Transition metal compound form colored solution initially. That when you add it with sodium hydroxide, you get a precipitate because you are forming the hydroxide combining or precipitating out the cations. So always, always think about what happened in excess as well. So when you do the test, you cannot just describe adding sodium hydroxide and get white precipitate. You have to talk about what happened in excess as well. So this was what you did in your practical class a while back. So I don't want to focus too much on it. You really need to be able to fill in your table on your own. All right. Now, these are the tests for gases. Ammonia turned red lemon pepper blue. As I said, it's uh, alkaline or basic. Cl2, first of all, we can use uh, blue lemon pepper. So if you use blue lemon pepper, so if we use blue lemon pepper, it will first turn red and then it goes to bleach. Bleach basically means white. Okay, it gets bleach, all right? Uh, it gets bleach because chlorine is bleaching agent all right so what happened is if we use if we use red then what happened is it will get to bleach meaning to say white in color all right that's why they say you can use either lemon paper they will still give you the same result which is bleach whereas hydrogen hydrogen is just pop with a lighter splint because hydrogen will react with oxygen so h2 plus o2 giving you H2O, so there's two there and two there, and obviously H2O put out fire, H2O put out your flame, because it does not support combustion, we use water to put out fire. Oxygen on the other hand support combustion, so it relies a glowing splint, the SO2 turns the KMNO4, which doesn't work on its own, you have to have acidified, if you forget this word, your answer is gone. The acid is required as a reactant, required as a reactant for this reaction to work. This was also a question in your alternative to practical. I forgot which work it was, but then you saw the equation, the H plus appear in the equation and they form water as well. So the purple colored is MnO4 minus. There's manganese seven, VI referred to seven. The colorless referred to Mn2 plus, which is very light in color. Last but not least, these are the flame color you had observed. You saw this with your own eyes when we did the practicals. I showed you, you actually play around with it. I have wooden splinter dip in or you know, soak in the solution containing each of these different ions. 
one of the easiest thing to highlight was the copper the copper which was the blue green color was very obvious okay uh, the hardest one to notice was this barium it was very very light green very very difficult to notice not too sure if you remember please watch the tutorial video uh, if i have time i'll stitch in the the flame test uh, video onto this tutorial but if not then you can watch the other existing tutorial video specifically on the flame color okay so the flame test tutorial video on the practical that we did a couple of months ago so this red and um, this yellow looks a bit orangey this lilac is a bit purple quite easy to notice the copper 2 plus was very easy to notice calcium 2 plus and the lithium plus i think this is a brighter red if I'm not mistaken, uh, but you know, you gotta you gotta look at the color and see exactly what is different. But of course, when you're asked about how to differentiate lithium plus and calcium two plus, you can also you can also use uh, sodium hydroxide. If you look at calcium two plus, calcium two plus can also be identified using a test with sodium hydroxide, and you get a white precipitate insoluble in excess. All right, so not only you can test calcium 2 plus with sodium hydroxide, you can also test it with flame color. So flame color is like additional test you can do to confirm the identity. However, for the lithium plus, sodium plus and K plus, so we know that lithium plus, sodium plus and K plus, as well as ammonium plus, their salts are all soluble. So meaning to say, even their, even their hydroxide, when you form the hydroxide, which is what we usually form when we add in sodium hydroxide, they are going to be soluble, meaning to say they don't give you any precipitate at all. Therefore, difficult to identify, very difficult to identify this cation. So what we can do is that we can do flame tests such as this, and they will give us different flame color, red, yellow, lilac, very easy to differentiate very easy to differentiate based on flame color so there are like additional um, uh, tools you can use to analyze these particular cations bear in mind these are flame colors they are not the color of solution be careful these are all except for copper 2 plus because copper 2 plus is a transition metal so these are all colorless except for copper 2 plus so they are colorless solution colorless solution because they are not transition metals however their flame color works on a different physics work on the different principles of science and therefore they can produce you these flame colors all right so i think not too sure how well they will reproduce on the screen so yeah i can see on the front facing camera that this green is very very obvious so this is a green color as a result of the copper 2 plus cations whereas just now you also get a green color flame, but um, this green color comes from BA2+. So this is green. It looks greenish, greenish, all right? But um, it might not reproduce that well on the screen. So this is barium 2+, whereas this is copper 2+, flame test, which is very green in color. Just to run backwards, I have calcium 2+, Calcium 2 plus, which is this vivid red color. Calcium 2 plus will give me red flame test. Li plus, Li plus, which is lithium plus, will also give me kind of like red color flame test as well. So very similar kind of color. It's kind of red in color. Na plus, sodium plus, is more orangey, orange color. Kind of orange flame color there is sodium plus. And last but not least, I have K+. Plus. K+, plus is more lilac. They call it lilac. It's more like purple. So the flame color hasn't changed that much. It still pretty much remains the same as like purple. So we call that flame color for K+, plus as lilac. All right. So all of these are described in the table. I'll just leave it there for this tutorial. All right, don't forget to click the button on the bottom right here to subscribe to the channel and share the channel widely with uh, people you know who can benefit from these tutorial videos. Follow me at ptt.chemistry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Telegram in order to get connected and comments and stuff. Okay, thank you for watching.